Hey, what's up guys? This is the new Eero 6 Plus. It's a dual band mesh Wi-Fi 6 system. I'm gonna unbox this thing, do some speed tests both in wired and wireless backhaul and do some range tests to see how far we can actually get. So this does support speeds of up to gigabit and supposedly covers up to 3000 square feet. And it has two ethernet ports on each. This one also supports Zigbee and Thread, just as a heads up. So it can do a little bit more than a router. So looking at the size of this thing, you know, it has the two ethernet ports, they're auto sensing and you have a USB-C power in the center. And I do have the regular Eero Pro 6 here, so, so as a size comparison. And I also have the Eero Pro 6E, as, which is pretty much the same size as the Eero Pro 6. And in another video, I'll compare these to each other in separate videos, one with this against the Pro 6 and this against the 6E, so you guys could see the differences. So smash that subscribe button if you guys haven't already. All right. So this is the same thing, and this is most likely just some power cables, so setup instructions, and we have our USB-C power cables, which is pretty compact. USB-C, and it is 100 to 240 volts, so it should be okay. And as a size comparison, you can see that the Pro 6C has a slightly larger power supply. But again, this is gonna be focused on the 6 Plus, and reading the manual from the Pro 6 that I've done reviews on, it basically says it wants you to use this cable to power up the routers. And we have a Cat 5e or Cat 6 or probably even Cat 7 Ethernet cable, but I'm sure supports gigabit speeds. And we have a little warranty, safety, and legal. It's been a couple days since I've unboxed these. I've been using it as my main mesh system, and so far, so good. So no drop, something like that. There was one thing I noticed during the range test, which I will talk about during the range test, but it wasn't a big deal. I think with the firmware update, it will get addressed. So in that time, I did do all the speed tests, wired wireless backhaul range test, again, with my iPhone 13 Pro Max Wi-Fi 6 device. And even though this is a Wi-Fi 6 mesh system, it does not support Wi-Fi 6E, I still tested with my Wi-Fi 6E devices, the Pixel 6 Pro and the Galaxy S22 Ultra, just because I've noticed for most, if not all mesh systems, the Wi-Fi 6E devices typically get slightly better speeds. So just noted that here. So starting with the internet speed test, when you get a router, no matter how fast the router is, when you're accessing the internet, you're limited by your internet speed. So whatever you're paying for uh, to your ISP, your internet service provider. And this thing is fast enough to handle my internet speeds, which are 940 megabits per second download and 880 megabits per second upload. So all the numbers I tell you guys will be in megabits per second, not in megabytes per second, which there's a big difference because one byte is equal to eight bits. So there's a huge difference between the two. Okay, so starting with an ethernet speed test, when, it's, when I do it on my computer, I get those full speeds. However, with the Wi-Fi devices, they don't go quite as fast. So with the iPhone, I got some pretty good speeds. You know, there's definitely a decrease in the upload. And with the Wi-Fi 6C, I got even better speeds with the download and slightly worse with the upload. To isolate the mesh system, I actually make my local area speed test server where I make my computer into a server. So I go from phone to router to computer, isolating the router, removing my ISP, and the public speed test server from the equation, I get amazing speeds with Wi-Fi 6 device. And with the Wi-Fi 6E device, I'm pretty much almost at gigabit speeds. Now, moving on to wired backhaul, essentially that's when you have two of these systems and they're connected to each other via ethernet. So wired backhaul speeds were pretty much the same as the single router, which is what I would expect because there is a gigabit uh, connection between them via ethernet. Now, when we look at the wireless backhaul system, off initial impressions, it's way slower than the wired backhaul, which it should be. However, this actually did better than what I was expecting, considering this is a dual band system. This is not a tri band or a quad band systems, which typically do better on wireless backhaul because they have that additional band or two additional bands, or they use it as a dedicated backhaul or a combination of the three. So the fact that this is a dual band and did this well, Honestly, this is phenomenal. Again, considering the price and the fact that this is a dual band. 
Now we get into the range test, which can vary based on location. So if you're in between floors, a lot of thick walls, a lot of other interference, if you're in a building with a lot of other routers around, this can all hurt your range. So I'm in a bit of a more of an open area than I used to be. So I typically get more range now, but take these numbers with a grain of salt because it really varies by location. So at 20 feet away inside my place, very, very fast, almost no drop in speeds. At 50 feet away, this is when I'm outside and obviously there is a drop and this thing goes all the way up to 180 feet, which is pretty good considering the price of this thing and considering the specs of this thing. Essentially, there's a 2.4 and a 5 gigahertz and now there's a new 6 gigahertz with the Wi-Fi 6C devices. This does not support 6 gigahertz. This just has a 2.4 and a 5 gig. Now, the 2.4 lets you go farther, but it's not as fast. The 5 gig is much faster than the 2.4. However, it doesn't have as amazing of a range as the 2.4 gigahertz does. So what I noticed with this one that I haven't really noticed too much with the other ones was that as soon as I passed the 100 foot mark, it the phone wanted to connect to the 2.4 because it had better Wi-Fi bars. Uh, however, the speeds were much slower because now I'm operating on that slower frequency. So I think because this is a new product, I think there will be firmware updates to address this. Again, after a few attempts, I did get to the five gigahertz, which did give me way better speeds, as you guys can see. But when I wasn't on that, it was actually a lot slower. Jumping to the Air app, this is one of those super easy to use apps that's also very, very stable. So you could be up and running in literally five to six clicks and you're good to go. So essentially it just tells you how to connect it to your modem and then it tells you to pick a Wi-Fi name and you're pretty much up and running. Very, very simple and it works very, very well. However, there are two cons with this app that's worth mentioning. Number one is it's limited on options. So unlike the Asus that literally lets you customize just about anything, this thing doesn't let you custom lets you customize very very little you could assign you know specific ip addresses if you wanted to um there, there are a few other options but it's not too many options this thing is really just simplified to make life easy so that's one thing the second thing if you want parental controls and a few other options like ad blocking and some other stuff well that requires a subscription now it doesn't cost much but it's not included with the price of the euro which i feel it would be nice if they did include that. Now to summarize, is it worth getting these? Why or why not? Well, I personally think the Eero 6 Plus is amazing. Eero did a phenomenal job with this, primarily because it gives really good consistent speeds throughout your home, very, very fast, especially the wireless backhaul. I was actually very surprised how fast the wireless backhaul was on the 6 Plus because I was expecting much less and it did a really good job considering this is a dual band system that is not too expensive. So the only issue that I had with this, which again, this is very early on, it just came out. I feel like firmware updates will fix this. If you're gonna walk far away, it'll probably default to the 2.4, which naturally it should. However, if the five gigahertz signal is still there, that's gonna give you way better speeds. I feel like they will fix this with the firmware update down the line, and I will do a long-term review to see if they actually did that or not. But within my home, within the vicinity, it was amazing, solid, I really like it. If you guys enjoyed this video, smash that subscribe button, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.